Well, okay, so this kid has, uh, in northern Minnesota has Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is deadly to 90%, 90% of the people who have it if it's untreated. But if it's treated, it's one of the most successfully cured types of cancer. I don't guess you don't cure cancer, you put it into remission. But well over 50% of people who are treated with radiation and chemotherapy um, are put into remission. The kid's 13 years old. He practices along with his family, his mother and father, and I think he's got six or seven siblings. They practice a Native American form of spirituality that relies on natural roots and plants and herbs to cure all maladies. And he, and he has said, he's 13, and he's written, supposedly written, his own you know, defense to the court because his doctor filed a suit against his parents trying to demand that the kid gets chemotherapy. So, you know, I started reading the story, and I thought, oh, it's another Christian science thing, but it's not a Christian science thing. It's a, and, and it's not, they don't believe that the, um, you know, the spirit of God will heal or your faith will heal. Instead, what he believes, and his, he wrote in his court document, he believes that the, the cures for all maladies are somewhere in nature, and we just have to find them. Oh yeah, he's a he's a naturalist. That's, yeah, that's the teaching of, of his religion, mm -hmm. and so I think it's an interesting, of course, it's an interesting, uh, you know, church state or religion versus state kind of conversation because the question is, should, you know, his doctor says, look, the kid, if, if he was eighteen, he could go ahead and commit suicide by not having chemotherapy, but he's thirteen years old. Does the state is it does this does he have a compelling case to force this kid to go against his own uh, religious conviction and receive chemotherapy even though he doesn't want to? He's had one round of chemotherapy and it was pretty tough on him and made him real sick and he decided after that to not have any more chemotherapy. And the second question is, and what the law? I don't know how the law takes this into account because it seems to me from zero to eighteen. The law sees you as one thing, una uh, incapable of making your own decisions, basically. And then from your 18th birthday on, suddenly you're magically capable of making your own decisions, and no doctor could bring this, this suit. But what about a 13-year-old developmentalist? I, you, you probably got to take your other little video break now, don't you? That's all right. I've been doing it as we've been going on. <clears throat> So, so I think it raises a really big question about, you know, the bigger, more, more interesting question for me is developmentally is a 13-year-old capable of making this decision, whereas a 6-year-old isn't and an 18-year-old supposedly is. But where does a 13-year-old fall in the middle of that? Yeah, right. You, you've, had, you've, had, you've had a few 13-year-olds in your life. What do you think? Do you think they can... They'd be able to make the decision about whether or not to have chemotherapy if they had some form of uh, lymphoma. Yeah, no, I, I have a I have a seventeen year old, eighteen year old son here who was diagnosed yesterday with mononucleosis and strep throat, ah. and went to the doctor Get where the they disease. where they uh, you know said, hey, this is what you've got. You have two options: one, you can take an antibiotic over the next ten days. Or number two, I can give you a shot right now, and that will go skip your gut, get right into you, and take care of this. And Taylor said, well, how, how much does the shot hurt? And she said, well, it kind of hurts. And he said, then I'll take the antibiotic. Come on. <laughs> yeah. But he's going back today to get the shot. Right? Yeah. So, so no, I, I, I think that there's something about the, um, the capacity of the brain to make uh, abstract considerations and thereby decisions that are not equal among 13, 18, and 18 year olds, and those who have uh, full of functioning uh, use of their brain. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's now what, what, what the law ought to be around someone's um, ability to make that decision. That's, that's a legal question. That's really a good one. But for anyone to argue that a 13 year old has the, the, the capacity to make that decision just seems, 
just seems yeah, well, to be ill-informed. Yeah, well, brought suit not against him, but against his parents. Yeah. But well, I, well, well, because you can't because you can't to... sue in this country. You can't sue a minor because they're not a they're not a a, a representative I, entity I, in this. I get it, and that's why I was so surprised when I was reading the article and and listening to the news coverage of this case because they also had a piece on it on Minnesota Public Radio that it was that it was in the words of the 13 year old boy in his his brief to the court about why he didn't want to have chemo. It was not a lawyer writing, and it was not his parents' writing. It yeah. was actually his own writing and saying, this is my religion, this is what yeah. I'm uh, committed to, and you I'm think... going to use roots and herbs to cure my Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so I I mean, I mean, know that my 15-year-old is not average, but we went on a mission trip to uh, Guatemala and built houses. We wrote the letter that he's yep. going to send to his supporters today. He didn't write it all on his own. Right now, it's from him. It really is his letter, but he didn't write it all on his own. My guess is this thirteen-year-old kid didn't just go into his room, come down with a scrap piece, you know, with a, with a notepad, and say, "Here it is." I bet someone looked it over. No, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> They're writing it from his perspective, but I'm not sure. It's just him. Hey, this is Blog Talk Radio conversation. We're back in the video side with our last five minutes, and if we can get the U stream to be working properly, you'll be on it. It's a Blog Talk Radio conversation with Doug Paget and Tony Jones called the question.